heading into spring 2015, you couldn't help but feel a sense of uncertainty surrounding Korean League of Legends. For starters, former world champions SK Telecom T1 had flopped in 2014, failing to make worlds. But the year's biggest storyline did not center around the fact that Faker and company were proven to be mortal, but that most of Korea's talent, including all five members of 2014 world champion Samsung White, had left Korea to compete in the financially greener pastures of China, North America, and Europe. Dubbed the Great Korean Exodus, many wondered if Korea could ever recover. Anyone good here will be in China by the end of the year. Let's keep that in mind as you watch champions. <laughs> <laughs> Korea is but a farm, a farm for the other right. regions. During this period of change, no one would have predicted that a team would come together and change the face of Korea, but it did. And from that team, two players would form a bond that would challenge dynasties. PDD still wanting this one. Arrow's gonna land on a wolf one more time. Good play from Gorilla. Lands the hook all too easily. No chains of corruption are gonna save you from that one. One was a washed up former superstar who had considered leaving the scene for good. The other was a rising talent in need of a new home. And yet, from the chaos of the great Korean exodus emerged one of the best bot lanes of all time, leading their teams to glory through their leadership, dedication, and skill. For Prey, it's a tale of redemption. For Gorilla, it's a tale of potential becoming reality. Ultimate once again for Bang, trying to get the kill onto Gorilla, but the hook is going to land. Prey, he's gonna be the kill. Oh, Featherstorm comes out and they survive once again. This is the story of Prey and Gorilla. Okay, here's that flash. There's that engage you were talking about. Ruler, my god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Goodbye. <laughs> Jesus. Originally from the Gandam neighborhood, Prey began playing League of Legends in university, and as a self-professed slacker, often cut classes to play. As Prey's solo queue rank improved, he eventually received offers from Startail and Najin EM Fire. But Prey was racked with doubt. Despite the success and popularity of StarCraft, the negative stigma surrounding pro gamers at the time kept Prey from fully embracing the idea of going pro. However, the alternative, staying in school and dealing with guilt over his poor grades, convinced him that going pro could be the right choice. Thankfully, that decision turned out better than anyone could have hoped for. Flash, Dazzle is an option, they're not even gonna need to do it. Well, Turk's not even there, so no Dazzle really. They slow him, very they nice, got him. Kyle comes in, they did get him. Or did they? Whoa, they got him a couple times, but he's still invisible. There's the barrier. Prey trying to escape, has the flash, dodges the undertow, and he'll actually make it out. What an incredible escape. Under the name Troll Kim, Prey's Najin debut launched him into star status almost immediately, thanks in part to superior mechanics, positioning, and a deep champion pool. Oh, nice crescendo! Look at that, Deft and Hart just torn apart. Double kill for Prey already. Good absolute zero zones up. Some of the members of Blue and Sword just tearing apart. Triple kill already for Prey as he comes back. He's going for the Quadra. Gets it onto Spirit. Can they slow him down? Can they give Prey this pentakill? It's going to take a long time to kill Acorn, but another snowball. Prey going for it. And there it is the pentakill for Prey. Najin Blacksword would finish third in their debut split and qualify for Worlds 2012 after running the table in the Season 2 Korea Regional Finals. Prey and his team entered into Worlds 2012 bursting with confidence. However, Worlds did not pan out as Prey had imagined. Back, they need to keep this fight up! They need to, or they will be out of this tournament! Surely no! Because Type S doesn't get the whole ace off the back of that one! That is it! 2-0 Type Assassins! They take it! Prey admitted that Black Sword were too cocky heading into their match against TPA and thought themselves to already be in the semifinals. It was a valuable, if brutal, lesson to learn, but Prey didn't let it drag him down. Nanjin would go on to take second at the MLG Fall Championship and win Champions Winter to close out the domestic season. In a league of his own by the end of his first year, Prey had already accomplished so much. A domestic title, a top eight finish at Worlds, and the pride of representing his country in a victorious effort at All-Stars. It was an impressive resume for just one year of competitive play. But the back half of 2013 would prove to be the beginning of the end for Prey's era of dominance. 
Najin Blacksword had slipped from top of the pack to a group stage exit in Championship Summer 2013. Oh, they may catch him! Helios trying to safeguard on a crescendo coming in, a good slicing Maelstrom! Is it gonna be enough though? Oh no! Members of Najin Sword dropping left and right, and CJ Blaze just ready with the damage. Despite the poor results, in the spring and summer, Najin's winning run in the winter 2012 season, combined with good results in the NLB League, Korea's second pro division, meant Najin Sword still finished the year atop the Korean circuit and earned the top seed heading into Worlds 2013. Congratulations to Najin Sword. Well deserved win right there. They show they are not afraid to return to the same champion picks even after losing. Masterful play by the man on your screen, Prey. Kane to his left. They completely came up huge in the bottom lane. There, Faker and SK Telecom T1K defeated Najin Blacksword in dramatic fashion in the semifinals to advance to the finals, where they went on to win it all. They're on to the next. Ladies and gentlemen, SKT have done it. This is the victory here. This is the final for SK Telecom T1. They will be representing Korea at the Staples Center in the World Final after a thrilling best of five. And well, they've deserved it here. Both teams would have deserved this victory after what's just happened. The era of Prey had come to an end. His talents surpassed by the likes of Faker. Still sit there. Behind oh! the there goes a shockwave. Prey tried to flash it. Box goes down. Good disengage there. Pumandu tanking up the turret. He's actually going to fall, but it will be a two for one in the end. Great roam by Faker up top. Although he would reluctantly play for a few more months in 2014, Prey would go on to take a hiatus from the competitive scene. With his confidence at an all-time low, the man once hailed as the best player in Korea quietly left Najin. As all this was happening, Najin's other team, White Shield, had an awakening. In fact, as Black Sword's stock fell, their sister team would emerge to take their place as a dark horse in Korea. And among them was a quiet, humble player by the name of Gorilla. Uh-oh, Zephyr gets caught way off guard, gets bubbled. There is a nice crescendo, but a tidal wave to follow up, and Zephyr gets locked down. Gorilla also in trouble. Does not go down just yet, but Space flashes forward. The poison not going to take Gorilla down. Previously living in Indonesia and pulled from the ranks of solo queue by Najin White Shield, Gorilla's entry into the ranks of Korea's elite was not met with fanfare and praise. In fact, with names such as Pooh Mandu, Mata, Heart, and Madlife competing against him, Gorilla's play in Champions Winter 2013 went largely unnoticed. Then, with a shot at Worlds 2014 in the balance, Gorilla finally gained the attention he so fittingly deserved. Gorilla just throwing everything he's got. I don't think he's gonna stop him. He stole, oh, he it! stole it! He stole Baron! And Solar Flare comes down. They may pay for it again, but a second Baron steal in a row from Shield. And Saves here comes Save. A lot of damage. Gimgoon gonna finally go down. And it's gonna be an ace! There it is! And Najin Shield with an insane comeback. Not only did his pocket Janna reignite passion for the pick, but Najin's incredible series of upsets against KT Rolster Bullets, KT Rolster Arrows, and SK Telecom T1K launched Gorilla and White Shield into the spotlight. And there goes the Nexus! Najin Shield is going the world! What an unlikely story for Najin Shield to come here and actually run the gauntlet. Started at the bottom and climbed their way up to the very top. And if they keep playing the way they've been playing, they are a serious contender to win the World Championships this year. No longer Korea's best kept secret, Gorilla entered into Worlds 2014 ranked among the best supports at the tournament and consequently the world. Sadly, Najin would falter at the tournament, losing a perfect game to Alliance before getting swept out of the tournament by OMG in the quarterfinals. It's going to be a 3-0 clean sweep, ladies and gentlemen. OMG have done it to take it down Naji Whitechill in the quarterfinals. Despite the result, he was a new star in the region, and with so many of Korea's best players looking to China and the West for big paydays, he was looked at as a linchpin around which the country's future could hinge. Gorilla's plans did not involve the big organizations who currently had a spot, nor did it involve the kind of money that drew his colleagues to China. 
In fact, Gorilla's new team would have to round up players that were left off LCK rosters and those that elected to stay in Korea. But who could possibly fit the bill and still give Gorilla the chance to qualify for Korea's top tier in 2015? We say Madman! Incredible play from Madlife! Prey is caught there! He can pray, but he can't escape all the cute lads again! After leaving Najin Black Sword, Prey waited and waited. He wanted to keep playing despite his six month absence, but no teams called. With no offers and many rumors about joining the army surfacing on social media, the AD carry had hit rock bottom. So when Gorilla reached out to him during his break to ask him to be a part of a team that may make it to 2015 champion spring, Prey jumped at the opportunity. The hell am I looking at? That is a bunch of uh, cat ears. I don't know what's going on. We're going to like Hello Kitty school. <laughs> I'm totally what? G Tigers, but that's I. They've got their tiger. I don't know their, what's going their, on. Their guys. tiger I'm... ears on and their pink vests. The GE Tigers went through the qualifiers and made it to the top tier of Korean League through the veteran presence of the Prey and Gorilla bot lane and a resurgent performance from Smeb in the top lane. However, their first game as a duo in the LCK would be met with a lot of skepticism. It's good to see Prey come back again. Has never quite been able to reach the heights that he used to get back on Najin's sword, but he's looking a bit better. Key to get out with his life. Tucson caught uh -oh. behind enemy lines, though. Yeah, Death Sentence connects. There's the box. Plays to keep him in it ults to try to get away but being slowed down oh, oh he failed his flash too it's a rough area oh. to flash in wasn't quite close enough there he tried That's to a hard get one to hit what grade would you give them for that game b b not b plus not b minus just b i think b is a, is a good grade for the ge tigers for that game a few right. mistakes but they, they finished it really strong with some nice engages, so. B tier, not quite the grade you're looking for if you're a team hoping to win a championship. Prey and Gorilla's first international event together saw them lose at IEM against a struggling world elite. At the time, this was considered one of the biggest upsets in League of Legends history. Last place LPL team World Elite, toppling a GE Tigers team that was sitting first in Korea. And that's it, the best of three, the first time that we have seen the GE Tigers lose a best of series. WE comes in here with their new players, no synergy, no experience, and takes out an undefeated Korean team. This was considered devastating for Prey and Gorilla, being unable to represent their region properly on the world stage. But despite the disappointing international showing, Prey, Gorilla, and the rest of the then GE Tigers still shattered expectations and became a menace domestically, topping the their first regular season in Korea and making the finals. GE Tigers versus SK Telecom here in the Champion Spring Grand Finals. From there, it was the start of an epic Korean rivalry. Trying to talk about the Tigers is to talk about their foil, SK Telecom T1, the best team in League of Legends history. They will be the season three world champions. The Tigers would constantly come up short against the Korean powerhouse when it really mattered. SKT with Tom, with Ezeun, takes the 3-0, GG! GE Tigers showing once again how dangerous they can be from behind, but they're skirmishing, just not up to the task of getting those early leads up against SKT. They were always one step behind as SKT would cruise to championships in 2015 LCK Spring, 2015 LCK Summer, and 2016 LCK Spring. And just like that, SK Telecom shows you who is the best team fighting team on this planet. Despite that, Prey and Gorilla delivered some of the most interesting moments and innovative strategies during the season. Here we go, oh, here who we can go. dance? Smab taking a lot of damage, nice shield from Here we Gorilla. go, he's oh, going in. He's trapped, Chaser with a huge kill, manages to make it out though. Trace goes back in again, uh -oh, Prey. kills on both sides, but yeah, Pilot does go down. Double kill for Prey, GBM, it's all on him. He needs to do damage, but no, triple kill for Prey. Prey and Gorilla kept marching on with subtle tweaks to their roster and play style. Adding Peanut in the jungle gave them more firepower and freedom for the bot lane duo to really make their mark. Inhibitor goes down with two members out of commission. Death timers are so short. Whoa, <laughs> Peanut. Yeah, jungle versus mid laner, no problem.
Prey and Gorilla won LCK Summer with the Rocks Tigers, finally standing tall as the best team in Korea and generating a ton of hype for their world's run. This group of players that had either retired or been rejected by other teams comes in, no big sponsor, no big team house. It's not necessary because they are going to win LCK Summer and they are going to get a spot in Worlds again. There it is, Rocks Tigers take it. GG, it's about time. They did this, however, without conquering their demons. Historically, SKT have always found the edge. I mean, that's definitely true. There's been three matchups between these two teams. Worlds, however, would be the true test for this new age Korean all-star lineup. Led by the confidence that the LCK victory brought, the Tigers looked like favorites to most. You're asking who I'm predicting for this game, and it's gonna be the Rocks Tigers. I think the Rocks Tigers, crowd seems to like the Rocks Tigers too. Though they didn't face SKT to win the LCK, and their record against them in big matches was lacking, it was poised to be their chance to break apart the dynasty. Everyone was expecting this to be the final. This was yep. the final last year, but they're drawn in the semifinals, and they have to take it Right now, even if this is the hardest matchup, you were going to have to go through SKT or Rocks anyway if you wanted the title, and these teams are ready. SK Telecom T1 are a third of the way there. When you're Gorilla, it's time to play support misfortune. On the wolf, and it's just going to be too much damage, too fast. Been killed, and they even got the pick off on Bang. Rocks doesn't actually have to stop pushing right now. They can delay the recalls. The arrow, Cheros. Look at the arrow. He can get teleport. He He's he stopped too. It's done. Rocks Tigers. Answer back with game two! Looking to make it 2-1 in the series. Rock's going for the play. Another kill comes through for Peanut. There's the Nexus, and it's 2-1 Rock's Tigers. Bengi subs back, and he saves SKT. Now we're going to game five. Despite their ingenuity, it was not enough. And SKT punched their ticket to their third world final. Following Worlds 2016, all five members of Rocks Tigers would leave and go their own way with the exception of Prey and Gorilla, who stay together and join Long Zoo. I really like this roster. When I heard about the Genesis, when I see it, it makes sense. This is a five-man roster where there isn't too many carries, where there is power, and there's no more power than that bot lane because Prey and Gorilla are fantastic. They know each other inside and out. And okay, the Rocks Tigers splintered, but one of the key components, this bot lane that can be aggressive, that can be defensive, that are wonderful together, stay together. And that makes me at least very happy. When the team faltered in the 2017 spring season, Long Zhu reset the roster. Long Zhu then went on to finish first in the summer split and finally take down SKT in the summer finals. Fake is gonna explode as the massive damage from Prey is going to say goodnight to the king of the mid lane, the Nexus Falls, and your new champions of the LCK is Long Zhu Gaming. This win solidified their status as the top Korean team on their way to Worlds 2017. Coming in as the number one seed from Korea for the second year in a row, Prey and Gorilla had high expectations, especially with a victory over SKT now under their belts. They were the only team to 6-0 their group in the group stage this year, but were defeated by another Korean team at quarterfinals. And there is nothing left to stop Samsung Galaxy as they take down their first opponent. They are the first in the semifinals, and who can really stop this team? Prey and Gorilla had been through hell and back. Collectively, they've experienced brutal defeats, perfect games, international disappointment, potential retirement, and subsequently have climbed to the highest tiers despite the failures. Actually looking for Peanut, the arrow is gonna of land as a flash leap into the hook from Gorilla, who is of course in the right position. This is the long jeu we wanted to see in this series. In the grand scheme of things, their trials and tribulations put them among the best bot laners in the entire world. The final thing that they're still missing is that one world championship, that one chance to cement themselves as true legends in the game. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button.